الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah Ya Ibadullah Undoubtedly human beings are social creatures as they say Human beings they look to establish relationships they look to establish some kind of bond on a communal level they look for friends for confidants for people who can aid assist and help them people who they can talk to so on and so forth you will find that typically this is the nature of human beings as they seek out others for companionship it is important to know that we have to be very careful of those individuals that we choose to take as friends because a friend will have a tremendous impact and a tremendous effect upon you so you want to make sure before handing over the likes of this influence you want to make sure that you hand it over to one who will do right by way of it one who you will not be regretful for taking them as a friend there is a saying in Arabic which is a sahib sahib that the friend is one who will draw you who will pull you in right a sahib sahib meaning that a friend they will pull you in they will draw you in they will bring you to what they are upon and typically you'll find that this is indicative of friendship when people are friends close companions you'll find that they resemble each other in their speech they resemble each other in certain mannerisms that they're very similar in a lot of ways they talk alike sound alike so on and so forth a sahib sahib your friend the friend he will pull you in he will draw you to him and we know the famous statement at-tuyur ala ashkaliha taqa that birds of a feather flock together those who are alike like each other this is the reality so the believer has to be very careful as to who they take as a friend because the stakes are high and the effect of friendship it is not something that is just restricted to the life of this world but it is something that will have a bearing on a person's hereafter as well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his noble book he says wa yawma ya'uddu dhalimu ala yadayhi yaqul and the day that the zalim the zalim the zalim is the one who makes dhulm and inshallah ta'ala will come back to this meaning uh, shortly but the day that the zalim will bite upon his hands and he will say ya laytani ittakhadtu ma'a rasulillah sabila oh woe unto me woe unto me with that i had taken a path with the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this individual he'll be regretful regretful on the day of judgment because he did not follow the way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he took another way he chose another path he didn't choose the path of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he chose to do something else so on the day of judgment you will find that this individual they'll be biting their hands biting their hands when yawma ya'uddu dhalim 'ala yadayhi the day when the zalim will bite their hands now the zalim so we can understand better have some better context the zalim is the one who makes dhul is the one who commits dhul wa dhul wad'u shay fi ghayri mawdi'ihi dhul means to put something in an improper place dhul 
is that you put something in the wrong place. Ma'am. So from the many acts of oppression, from the many acts of misappropriation of this individual, you'll find that one of them, which is highlighted, is putting a friend inside of the wrong individual, taking the wrong person as a friend. As Allah Ta'ala, he goes on to say, informing us of what these losers they will say on the Day of Judgment. He will go on to say, this individual is Zalim, as Allah Ta'ala informs us. Ya wa ya waylata laytani lam attakhidh fulanan khalila. He will say, oh, woe to me. Ah, woe to me. Would that I had never taken so and so as a friend. Woe unto me that I would have never taken so and so as a friend. So we see here that this individual, they will be very regretful, very remorseful for what they have done. And from those things that will be the source of great remorse, which is highlighted here, is that they took a bad friend. So he will say, woe unto me had I, had I not ever taken so-and-so as a friend. Why is that? What was the downside in taking that particular individual as a friend? Allah Ta'ala, he goes on to explain. Allah Ta'ala, he tells us what means that this individual on the Day of Judgment, this individual, they would, out of regret and remorse, they will say, they will utter, he indeed led me astray from the reminder that this friend that he had taken, that now he is regretful and remorseful, that he had taken him as a friend, now that he wished that he never had taken him as a friend, he will say that this individual led me astray from the reminder. He led me astray from the reminder, meaning this Quran. He led me astray from the reminder after it had come to me. And the shaytan is ever a deserter to individuals when they are in their hour of need. This is the way of the shaytan. When the person is in their hour of need, the shaytan will abandon them. When a person needs help, the shaytan will not be there to help. <clears throat> so, never think that any individual who does not help you remember Allah is a person who has any type of merit or any type of benefit for you. So I really want you to contemplate on this now. Because these individuals will be regretful. These individuals who will be regretful because they took away other than the way of the Prophet wasallam. These individuals will be regretful because they had taken a, 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 a friend that led them astray. This individual, they will be sad and they will have remorse and they will have regret. So I want you to reflect now. All of these individuals who we may look up to them. All of these individuals who we may deem them as having some type of merit. All these individuals who are not upon what is correct, but they are popular. All these individuals who they are not upon the way of the Prophet wasallam, but they may have money, they may have fame, and things of this nature. These individuals who people they want to draw near to, people they want to befriend them, and so on and so forth. These individuals who are living this type of street life, these individuals who are running the streets, these individuals who are uh, busy in themselves, chasing after the dunya and the worldly uh, lusts and desires of this world. These type of people, are they really worth befriending and having them draw near unto you? These type of individuals, are these the type of individuals that will remind you about Allah? Are these the type of individuals that will remind you to pray? Are these the type of individuals that will remind you and encourage you to fast, voluntary fast? Are these the type of individuals who will encourage you to do what is correct? Or <clears throat> are these the type of individuals who will bring you the latest song that came out? The type of individuals that will talk to you about the latest movie that had come out and encourage you with this? Or are these the type of individuals who they will encourage you with this party or this club 
or this gathering and so on and so forth. Any person that does not help you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a person that you should ever want to spend any considerable amount of time with. It's not a type of person that you will ever want to bring close and draw near unto you. Because when we look here, and I, and, and, and I really want us to truly understand this, that if we take this same road that Allah Ta'ala is informing us that this volume had taken, this individual who will be biting his hands on the day of judgment, if we take that same route by taking a route other than the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and befriending bad people, then do you really feel secure that this will not be you? This will not be your statement on the day of judgment? Yeah, wa ilata laytani lam attakhid fulanan khanina Ah, woe unto me with that I had never taken so and so as a friend. Do you think that you're going to be the exception? That you can take a bunch of bad friends and then you're still going to be okay on the day of judgment? Now I want you to reflect. All of these kuffar, all of these individuals, all of these ones who they have gained their fame through sin and transgression. All of these individuals who have gained their fame through sin and transgression. These undoubtedly are not the people that we are going to want to be with on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, those individuals who will be cast into the hellfire. Do you would you want to be with them on the day of judgment? And I want everyone to answer this to themselves. On the day of judgment, will you want to be with these individuals? On the day of judgment, when the human beings are separated and put into groups, the believers with the believers, the disbelievers with the disbelievers, when everyone is put into groups, what group would you want to be with on that day? What group would you want to stand with on that day? Would you want to stand next to popular man so-and-so who was a disbeliever? Would you want to stand next to him on the day of judgment? Of course, anyone with a, an ounce of intellect, they will say, no, no way. I don't want to be with them on the day of judgment. I don't want to be in the ranks of the disbelievers on the day of judgment. I don't want to be grouped and gathered with them, the disbelievers on the day of judgment. No. I want to be with the believers. I want to be with the righteous. I want to be with the Anbiya and the Rusul. I want to be with the prophets and the messengers. I want to be with the, the, the righteous folk, those ones who are going to the Jannah. That's who I want to be with. Okay? If you don't want to be with Kafir man so-and-so on the day of judgment, why are you striving to be with him in the dunya? If you don't want to be associated with the disbeliever so-and-so on the day of judgment, why would you want to take them as a friend in this world? I want you to really to reflect on this. Those who are successful, they start with the end in mind. I want you to think about this. Think about your hereafter. Think about your akhirah. Think about the time that you're going to spend in your grave. And think about the time which is longer than that, that which is after the grave, that which is your forever. Think about that. And if this individual is not helping you to do what is correct, if this individual is not helping you to stand upon what is right, then this individual is not worthy of, 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 of you befriending them. They have, they have no benefit for you. Now I want you to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He informs us of what the regretful individuals is going to say on that day. Those individuals who did not take the path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Hafiz Imam Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions, يُخْبِرُ ta'ala عِنَّدَ he says that Allah Ta'ala, He informs us about the regret of the wrongdoer. Allah informs us about the regret of the wrongdoer. Na'am, عَنِ النَّدَمِ الظَّالِمِ أَلَّذِي فَارَطَ طَرِيقَ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَمَا جَاءَ بِهِ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مِنَ الْحَقِّ مِنَ الْحَقِّ الْمُبِينِ That individual who they separated themselves, they separated themselves from what the Prophet Sallallahu came with, they separated themselves from the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that which he has come with from Allah, that which Allah has given him and sent him with <clears throat> from the clear truth. So instead of taking the, the right way, the way of clear truth, the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they took another way. They chose something else. 
They wanted to do something different. Ma'am. So on that day, they will have nothing but regret. These individuals, as the Imam Kathiri says, وَسَلَكَ طَرِيقًا أُخْرَى وَإِلَى سَبِيلَ رَسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. They took another path other than the path of the Messenger. صلى الله عليه وسلم. فَإِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ نَدِمَ حَيْثُ لَا يَنْفَعْهُ النَّدَمْ So now on the Day of Judgment, they are regretful. They have full of remorse on the day that regret will not benefit them. On the day that regret and remorse, it will not avail them in any which way, shape, or form. وَعَضَّ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ حَسْرَةً وَأَسَفَهَا And they'll be biting on their hands out of full regret. Feeling sorry, full regret now, but now the regret will not benefit them. It's too late now. It's too late for them to feel regretful. So while we still have opportunity, while we still have opportunity to change our lives, it is important that we don't put ourselves in this type of situation that we will come on the day of judgment and, and feel nothing but remorse, nothing but regret. I caution you to be very wise. As to who you take as a friend. Because that individual that will turn you away from the guidance is not a person that you want to be around. That individual who will challenge your morals, that will challenge your discipline, and so on and so forth. This is not the type of person you want to be around. So if you have in your circles individuals who they encourage you to drink alcohol. Or they encourage you to smoke cigarettes or to smoke marijuana or to take some type of drugs. Individuals who will encourage you to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Individuals who would encourage you to fornicate and to make fornication. Individuals who will always want to bring you the latest song that came out. Always want to share with you the latest movie that dropped. So on and so forth. These are not the type of individuals who you want to take as friends. These are not the individuals who you want as a friend. Because this is an individual who, they, they do not remind you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if anything, they will do what? They will lead you astray from the remembrance of Allah. As Allah ta'ala, he informed us of what this evil friend did to that man. لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ They distracted me. They led me astray from the remembrance you want to look for someone who's going to help you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone who's going to encourage you to be a better Muslim. Someone who's going to encourage you to be a better human being. This is something that is tremendously important. And I want you to really reflect and to understand that there are individuals who they look for some type of uh, feeling of belonging. They want to feel like they belong. Right? So... They utilize that as an excuse on why they want to take this one as a friend or take that one as a friend and so on and so forth. That this individual, they, they, uh, you know, they look out for me. This individual has helped me when I had uh, times of need and so on and so forth. Now, I want you to reflect on it. Even if that is the case that they have helped you in times of need from a dunya standpoint. If they are not reminding you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they are not encouraging you to do what is correct, if they are not reminding you to stay away from what is wrong and discouraging you from doing what is wrong, then this, is, then this person, they're helping you in the dunya, is, is very insignificant. It's very insignificant in the overall grand scheme of things. Because if they help you in dunya, but then hurt you in akhirah, what good is it? I want you to understand that. Let me say that again. If they help you in this world, but they hurt your hereafter, then what good is that person really? Right? Because this world is temporary. It's, 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 it's about to leave us anyway. This world is temporary. It's about to leave us. There's nothing in this world that lasts forever. Situations come and they go. Good times come. Good times go. Bad times come. Bad times go. This is the nature of this world. It's not forever. So that's this world. The hereafter, the hereafter is forever. So if you had to put stock into one of those two, either this world or the hereafter, 
which would you want to put stock in? Which would you want to put the main bulk of your energy into? Into that moment, which lasts longer, correct? Into the hereafter. Because the hereafter is forever. Okay, so if a person helps you in this world, but to the detriment of your hereafter, did that person really help you? Did they really help you? Now, if a person helps you with your hereafter, but didn't give you much assistance in, with this world, did that person really let you down? Or did they help you tremendously? Huh? Did they let you down? Did they help you tremendously? So I don't want you to be fooled and tricked by the shaitan. Because this is what the shaitan does. He comes and says, oh, but this person, they, they, they gave you gas money when you needed gas and so on and so forth. So, so that's the reason now? So that's the reason now to throw your hair after away and put your hair after in jeopardy because this individual helped you with some gas money? Hmm? You know, when we look at it from those terms and, and, and in that way, you say, well, you know what? Maybe not. That don't, that don't sound like it makes sense. Yeah, they helped me out. They helped me out. They lent me some, some money so I can pay my rent. But is that really worth losing your house in the hereafter? Is that really worth losing your mansions in the hereafter? Is that worth losing your castles in the hereafter and, and lofty places of residence in the hereafter? No, not at all. So we should be very careful because what? A sahib, sahib, the friend will pull you to them. The friend is going to pull you to them, pull you to what they are upon. Because those who are alike, like each other. If Yah was different, if Yah was really different, polar opposites, you wouldn't be friends. Because you, you wouldn't be able to have a conversation. You have nothing in common. But when people have a lot in common, when people are like each other, then you find they can be friends. Because those who are alike, like each other. You understand? So it's important that we really understand the grand scheme of things. That taking a friend is not something that is just like, I'm just taking him and that's my friend and then that's it. Or for the sisters, I'm just taking this individual and taking her as a friend and that's it. It doesn't go beyond that. But no, it goes quite beyond that. This person can have a tremendous impact and effect upon you hereafter. That individual can destroy you, especially when they're not reminding you about, they're not reminding you about, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, an individual may come and they may say, but listen, man, you old. You don't know what time it is no more. You don't understand. You, you know, you're not, you're not hip. You're not down no more. Stuff like this. But I want to tell you that you have yet to be my age, but I used to be your age. I used to be a teenager. I used to be in my early 20s and 20s. I used to be in my 30s and that. So, you have yet to make it to my age, but I, I've lived life through your age. And trust me when I tell you that human beings are human beings. Not much really changes. Do you know, in my own personal experience, I know of individuals, I had individuals who I had to cut them off because you're sitting there, I was sitting there trying to talk to them about the categories of a tawheed when I was a young teenager, first time reading it and learning, I was excited. So I'm going, I'm talking to them about this and trying to share with them something I had just learned. And they were kufar, you know, I'm giving them dawah, you know what I mean? But this is, you know, I'm coming from this, from this aspect. And then, to, and then to have them listen to me, speak about these things, and then with blinking, looking at me like a deer caught in headlights. And then when I finish, turn around and say, yeah, I hear you, but yo, did you, yo, you heard that new mixtape? You heard that new mixtape from so-and-so? And it's just, subhanAllah, after all of that, calling you to a tawheed, inviting you to fulfill the purpose by way in which you were created, and then your response to me is, did I hear so-and-so new mixtape? What? So, as you could imagine, that was a very clear sign to me. I got to get some new people to hang around. And Allah Ta'ala blessed me and put Muslims around me who helped me and who encouraged me. But the point is, is that there comes a time in all of our lives that we may be put into a situation like this where we have to, we have to make a change. Either we're going to go right or we're going to go left. There comes a fork road sometimes, as they say, where you're going to continue doing what is wrong or you're going to change your life and do what is right. And when that time comes, you have to have the courage to... Do what is right. Allah Ta'ala, He will not abandon you. Allah Ta'ala, He will 
put around you good people that will help you, that will aid you, and that will assist you. Allah Ta'ala, He will guide you to that which is correct. Put your trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Beg Allah when you're prostrating in sujood. Beg Allah to put good people around you. Beg Allah to remove these evil people from your life. Beg Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is the greatest means that you can possibly take to better your life. The point is, is that these individuals who you have befriended, then they're individuals that are way better than them. Go to the masjid. Connect with your brothers. Connect with your brothers. And you will find that which will suffice you from whatever this kafir so-and-so had to offer. Because in reality, as we mentioned, they really have nothing really substantial to offer. And don't put yourself in a, in a position that you'll be the one biting your hands on the day of judgment because they this individual had led you astray from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is incumbent as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he taught us as it comes in a hadith that has been collected by Imam Al-Turmadhi wa sahahu al-Albani قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تصاحب إلا مؤمنا ولا يأكل طعامك إلا تقي The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said Do not befriend anyone except a believer Do not befriend anyone except a believer And do not let Anyone eat your food except that they are one who have taqwa. Do not let anyone eat your food except that they are one who have taqwa. And here, it is clear from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, la tu sahib. Do not befriend anyone except a believer. Do not befriend anyone except a believer. Why? Why would the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell us this? Hmm? Why would the Prophet Sallallahu tell us to only befriend a believer? Because, as it comes in a hadith, Hadith Abi Huraira, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, fi ma rawahu at-Tirmadhi, and that which Imam at-Tirmadhi, he brings. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, al-raju ala deen khalili, that a man is on the religion of his friend. فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ So let every one of you look to who he takes as a friend. Ah, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, الرجل على دين خليله. A man is on the religion of his friend. Ah, so now do we understand better why the Prophet ﷺ, he said, لَا تُصَاحِبْ إِلَّا مُؤْمِنًا Do not befriend anyone except a believer. Why? Because الرجل على دين خليله. The man is on the religion of his friend. The man is on the religion of his friend. So it is incumbent and is a must that we only take the believers as our friends. It is if you want to take a friend, then take the believer as your friend. Naam. And if you cannot find a believer to be your friend, then it's better for you not to have any friends. Why? Because the stakes are too high. The stakes are too high. The stakes are too high. Do not jeopardize your akhirah because you want to hang out with somebody in the dunya. Do not hold on to and cling to and develop a close relationship with an individual who you're not going to want to stand next to on the day of judgment. Do you understand? Do not develop a friendship and close companionship with anyone who you would not want to stand near to them on the day of judgment. But only befriend a believer because a man is on the religion of his friend. Because what? A sahib sahib because the friend will pull you to them. The friend will draw you in and, and then you're gonna be upon what they are upon. And don't be like those individuals who believe that no, I'm gonna affect them with good and they're gonna come around and they're gonna start doing good. The reality of it is is that in those rare instances where that happens, where a person he gives dawah to some of his old buddies and so on and so forth, and they leave that. What happens is now, whoever has accepted Islam with you, you all got to leave and go find some new people. You can't run in the same circles. Why? Because there's no compatibility. 
Now, there's no compatibility. Now, I've seen this from my own personal experience, and I've seen this from others' experience. Now, that I have witnessed, it comes a point where you, now your friends change. Why? Because there's no compatibility. Yesterday, before, when everybody was on Kufr, they were compatible. They were all doing the same things. Now that this one and that one and that one has become Muslim, those who have yet to become Muslim, there's no, there's no compatibility. They're talking about going to the club. You're talking about going to the masjid. They're talking about going to a festival. Huh? You, you're talking about going to a conference and, and, and for a lecture. They're talking about the, the music that they downloaded. And you're talking about the lecture series that you've been listening with and, and studying through. Where, where is the commonality? Hmm? Where is the commonality? They want to drink alcohol. And you say, I, I, we don't drink alcohol. I'm not going to sit with you if you're doing that. They want to do all type of haram things. And you're trying to do halal things. There's no compatibility. There's no common ground. So what's going to happen is that it's going to become frustrating for you to be with them. Because they're always talking about some, 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 some haram things. And you will be a source of frustration for them. Because you're going to be the joy kill. You always want to do something that this guy always want to do something that's right. You always want to do pure halal stuff and things like that. And 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 and, and the kafir man, them, they're not on that. They don't want to do that. Do you understand? So there's gonna come a point where you have to you have to separate. You have to go your way, and they'll go there, and they'll go their way. Why? Because there's no compatibility there whatsoever. So reflect upon this. Reflect that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that a man. Is on the religion of his friend. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi gave us a very good example of a righteous sitting and of a sitting that is bad, is evil, is not good. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَثَلُ الْجَلِيسِ الصَّالِحِ وَالصُّوءِ That the similitude of the righteous sitting and of the evil sitting. Kahamil al-misk. Wa al-kir. It is like the uh, oil merchant. The merchant of, fry, of fine fragrances. And the, uh, what would you say? Like the ironsmith. The one who blows into the bellows. Naam? The blacksmith or the ironsmith. He blows into the bellows. Kahamil al-misk. As far as the, the merchant of, of, of oils or fine fragrances, perfumes and colognes and the like, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, إِمَّا أَن يُحْذِيَكَ وَإِمَّا أَن تَبَتَاعَ مِنْهُ وَإِمَّا أَن تَجِدَ مِنْهُ رِيحًا طَيِّبًا He said, as far as the merchant of fine fragrances, it is either that they will give you a gift they will give you a sample or they'll give you some 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 perfume some oils here you can have that right or you can seek to buy something from him you can seek to buy some of his products or you will find from him at the very least a very good smell you will find from him at the very least a very good smell when you go into his 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 company you go into his president uh, his 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 his, uh, his presence you'll find what Good smell. Now, because he, he works in oils, he works in fine fragrances. Now, so he has them on his on his hands, some may have spilt on his clothes. Huh? So he's, he's always smelling good, he's always good, always pleasant, always very pleasant. This is like the situation where it comes to the righteous sitting. Now, if you look at the three possibilities, right? Either you he'll give you a gift, you can buy something from him, right? Or what's the third one? You find for him a good smell. And all of these three situations, all these three scenarios, is good. It's all it's, it's good. It's all good. Right? And this is a situation when it comes to them hanging with the righteous people in a good sitting. It's always good. It's always an upside. Now right? it's always an upside in being with those who are righteous. Because they're either going to aid and assist you into doing what is correct. They're going to remind you when you forget. They're going to discourage you from doing what is wrong. You might be able to learn something about the religion from them. Nah. And at the very least, you know what's going to happen? 
they're not going to hurt you. They're not going to hurt you. They're not going to harm you. You're, you're safe with them. You understand? So the righteous sitting, being with righteous people, there's always an upside to it. There's no downside. There's always an upside. It's always benefit. It's always benefit. Even if that benefit is as little as, there is no harm that, that, that will come to you. So this is all beneficial. It's all beneficial. And this is what? The righteous people. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi went on to explain. And the, and the one who blows into the bellows, the ironsmith. Naam. Blows into the one who blows into the bellows. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, إِمَّا أَن يُحْرِقَ ثِيَابَكَ he said either he will burn your clothes, man, because you know the iron smith when they're uh when they're forming things, right, and they're beating it on the anvil, they're beating it on the anvil with the big hammer, sparks fly off, right? Sparks fly off. So those sparks they fly off of that, it may hit your clothes, it may put a hole in your thigh, it may burn through your clothes, man. it may may hit your hand, burn your hand, or go into your eye and cause damage. Okay? So if you with this this one. He may, he may do something that hurt you, right? The Prophet Sallallahu he went on and he said, وَإِمَّا أَن تَجِدَ رِيحًا خَبِيثًا Or, you're going to find a very bad, nasty smell from him. You're going to find a very bad, nasty smell from him because of, you know, all of the, the, the heat and the, the cold and the things that he's burning to get the flame up to this certain temperature. It's going to put off exhaust. It's going to put off smoke. Uh, the early man, they say, uh, this you know the type of smoke that 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 will make you sick that may have any carcinogens and so on and so forth. When you look at this situation, and this is indicative and this is an illustration of what of a bad sitting of being around bad people. When you look at this, it's all downside. There's no upside to it. There's no upside to it. Either you're gonna get your clothes burnt or you're gonna smell a nasty smell from them. And and as you know, when you're in those situations where it's it's smoky like that and there's a lot of smoke, right? You're gonna walk away smelling bad. You're going to walk away smelling bad, even though you yourself wasn't the one that was beating the metal against the anvil and so on and so forth. You yourself wasn't doing the work of the ironsmith, but because you were in close proximity to them, you walk away smelling bad like them. Ma'am, so you walk away smelling bad. It's all downside. Where's the upside? This is the similitude the Prophet said that he gave us of the righteous sinning and of the evil sinning. So it is incumbent that we really look at this and we take this into extreme consideration that we really strive to want good for ourselves. So we put ourselves around people who are going to benefit us. We put ourselves around people who are striving to benefit themselves. We put ourselves around people who are better than us in religion. Now, look for a friend who is more religious than you, who's more righteous than you. Someone who's going to help you become better. Someone who you can compete with and become better as a better Muslim, a better human being. Someone who's going to help you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala, he told our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَاصْبِرُ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهُ Allah Ta'ala, he says what translated means, and keep yourself patient, O Muhammad. Patient with those who call upon their Lord. Meaning your companions who call upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Who do righteous good deeds. Who perform their prayers. Who glorify Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Morning and afternoon, seeking his face. Seeking his face. I bring this because we have to be patient. Whatever you think you're going to gain from befriending bad people, know that it's not worth it. And whatever you think that you're going to lose out on by befriending righteous people is worth it. So Allah Ta'ala, he says, Wasbir. Be patient. Be patient with those who are righteous. Because being around them is going to be an ultimate advantage for you. It's going to be an ultimate good thing and benefit for you. So be patient. Be patient and be with those who believe. Those who call upon their Lord. 
Those who call upon their Lord in the morning and in the fore and in the afternoon, seeking His face. Allah Taala He goes on to say, "Wala ta'adu aynaka anhum turidu zina al hayat al dunya, wala tuti' man awfalna qalb qalbahu al zikrina wa taba hawahu wa kana amruhu furuqa." Allah Ta'ala, he says what translated means. <clears throat> and let not your eyes overlook them, desiring the pomp and glitter of the life of this world. And obey not him whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance. One who follows his own lusts and owes affairs, meaning their deeds, have been lost. I want you to reflect now on the righteous people and their characteristics. Those individuals who patiently call upon their Lord, those individuals who call upon their Lord, who make the prayers, they call upon their Lord in the morning and in the evening, in the afternoon, seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the kind of people you want to be around. Now look at the, the other ones. The people who we don't want to be around. Allah Ta'ala informs us, He said that these individuals, they what? These are those who have been made heedless of His remembrance. They have been made heedless of His remembrance. These are those who they don't remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Because they're heedless as it relates to His remembrance. These individuals, they, in, when, uh, they, they sing songs. These individuals who they may rap out lyrics, right? When, when nothing is going on and they're not doing nothing, you find them singing, rapping lyrics, you know, talking foolish. No remembrance of Allah, just remembering the, the kufr, just remembering the sin and transgression. That's it. That's all they do. These individuals who follow their own lusts and their own desires, they follow their lusts and they follow their own desires. These are the kind of people who we don't want to be around. So if you have anybody in your life who fits this bill, who was heedless about the remembrance of Allah, who followed their own desires, right? Then this is the kind of person who you want to disconnect yourself from. <coughs> this is the type of person who you want to disconnect yourself from, the kind of person who you do not want to befriend. No way. The people you want to befriend are people who they put their trust in Allah They worship Allah, they call upon Allah, they remember Allah, and they help you do the same. And this is some of what <clears throat> I wanted to mention, uh, but this is what Allah Ta'ala, He has made easy for me to mention. فَنَكْتَفِي بِهَادَ الْقَدْرِ وَصَوَى يَسَلَّمْ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَجَزَاكُمَ اللَّهُ خيرا